It's time for another Dice Tower review with the board game Knights. Ah, Christoph, you've made it. I've managed to finish moving. I've got all the set all set up. You'll love it. Let's go check it out. Welcome to the Board Game Nights, I'm Sam Gillespie. I'm Chris Ostrader, and today, welcome to our new digs on the all-upgraded Board Game Nights. So, Board Game Cavaliers? Maybe. Anyway, today we're going to be reviewing a game that we have reviewed once before, a revisit of sorts. It is A Few Acres of Snow. Now, we did initially do this review on our original YouTube channel before we were part of the Dice Tower, uh, but that was our, one of our very first reviews, so we mm. sort of decided to try and spice it up by revisiting it now and yeah, talking think, about our new And I think on. it deserves a revisit. Absolutely. A Few Acres of Snow is a two-player war strategy game that uses deck building as a mechanic. It was developed by Martin Wallace and published by Tree Frog Games. This uh, game does something very interesting with the deck building genre by having every location on the board corresponding to a certain location card. And each of these location cards have certain resources like uh, money or furs or military power or ships or boats or other things like that which you'll need to progress your entire forces forward. And the interesting thing in this game is how they go about conquering new locations. For example, on my turn as the British player, I can choose to play, hmm, let's see. Let's say I want to take Deerfield over here. I can play the New Haven card, which connects to Deerfield, and requires me to play a boat. I'll take that from, let's say, St. Mary's and play it down. And that also requires a settler for me to settle there, so I'll play Philadelphia. And those three cards are then allow me to place a settlement on Deerfield. Once you take a location, you then look through the uh, deck of available location cards, find it and add it to your discard pile. Now you can immediately see that you require a large number of combinations of cards to take new locations rather than just being able to take them very easily. Mm. And as you take more and more locations, getting those combinations gets harder and harder. Because you need that starting lo location, you need the resources to get there, and then you need to place it. And then you're adding cards to your deck. So you can see that there's bloat coming straight into the game straight, very quickly, very fast, if you expand too quickly and too early. So instead of settling new locations on your turn, you can choose to then spend your money to draft new empire cards into your deck. This will also further bloat your deck, but they can do really nice things like the governor, which means you can throw cards out of your deck construction, boats to help you move along and advance new settlements, home support, a really good card, which it takes three cards as a free action, fortifications, Indian leaders, all these nice things to make your game a bit more varied. But the most important thing in that deck are the military cards. Because what happens is, if you want to take a particular region that your opponent occupies, you take this siege token, you put it there, and then you put your military units into the corresponding area on your side of the board. And as you add more un units, the, this particular track will move up and down, depending on who's got the most in this particular battle. At the end of the other player's turn, if, you're, if you have more soldiers, more, more military power than your opponent, then you get to win that battle, and then you get to settle there immediately, removing theirs, scoring you points as well. So winning these sieges is key to maintaining that momentum to keep going. And very importantly, when you're in the siege, and both players in the siege, they are playing these military cards into the corresponding siege area, and they are removed from the deck while the siege is occurring. Yes, yeah, so it can be, you can get in a situation whereby both players played all of their military, have some even cities in that, that particular region where you can't do anything, and you sort of reach a stalemate sometimes. As an alternative to each of your own location piles and empire cards, there is an alternative common area of cards that you can draft from, and one of these involves Native Americans, a really aggressive card that you can choose to play on your turn to raid or ambush other players. Yeah, so both players will get access to these cards, and uh, the Native Americans have this special ability that allows you to just completely remove an other, t other player's settlements unless they have one to counter. Mm, a raid. So, yeah, a raid. Or you can choose to use it to ambush the other player's hand, which means that any of military units they have have to go back to their empire deck, which is tragic when you've got a few of your powerful units go Horrible. straight back. And importantly, these cards can only be countered by these cards well, or other cards in the empire there are, deck. There are some cards in the empire, but most of them are these cards. So you're going to want a mm. few of these, but if you have too many of them, it's going to slow you down. So there's, the, there's a balance in that respect. Indeed. These cards seem less useful in the late game because you can get fortifications up to protect it, but early games are oh, nice... Man. Early Native game. American injection can really uh, mess things up. Because the th important thing with the Native Americans is that they can do a raid or ambush when you're two spaces away. Mm. So you could be in Kennebec and decide to all of a sudden, pew, 
jump forward and raid Permaquid and which destroy is, it. Which can be quite devastating at an early game point. Indeed. Uh, but the, but the r- final goal of all of this game is to try and take the capital city of the other team. Hmm. So if the uh, British player takes Quebec, they meet immediately with the game. And if the uh, French player beats takes either New York or Boston, they immediately win the game. So Or, alternatively, if enough buildings get destroyed, then the game will end and whoever has the largest control over the board gets the most, ha- gets the most points and therefore wins the game. Now, the first thing I want to say about A Few Acres of Snow, Sam, yes. is that I really like the theming of it. Yes. The whole idea that it's, you know, the British and the French and fighting over just a few acres of snow. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the title. Where is it from, actually? Uh, it's a Voltaire quote, I believe, saying that uh, when Quebec fell during the, the particular war that this is about, uh, that it was just simply a few acres of snow, which is a nice historical reference. And there's a nice uh, little a bit at the end of the booklet which explains what happened during the uh, actual war, which is mm. quite nice. Mm. A good See, little bit of history in it. Yeah, but always a nice touch in a game, I find. Yeah, um, that's, that's what I quite like about this game, that it is actually quite simple, the gameplay. That yeah. it, it isn't that hard to get into. Like, we played this a long time ago. Like, yeah. Probably like a year ago now. Well, probably, yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. And so we, we picked it up today to play it again for a review, and... Well, yeah, I mean, it's not that hard, but there's either it's that steep learning curve is just because there's so many options. Yes, that's You're true. You're just sitting there walking through this massive reference sheet going, okay, I can do this, 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 but that, this. But, this. but that's reality, good. you only have two or three options. But that's a good thing. But you have to filter there's, there's a lot of options you can do, but here's the thing. This is where it differs from a game like Twilight Struggle, in a way, where you've got that hand of five... And you're going to have to... You, you need one card to do one thing, like connect a location. Yes, yes. And then you also need, say, settlers. That was my big problem, to have settlers as well. Yeah. And that was always on the card I was trying to play to get that location. <laughs> well, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, you always were, never had the right cards at the right time. And it, A Few Acres of Snow was that frustrating aspect of going, Ah, oh, this isn't the card I need, this isn't yeah. the card I need, this isn't the card I need. And you're spending turns doing very little but trying to cycle your deck mm. sometimes mm. when you've not got that optimum deck that you will oh, yeah. get. Yeah, because You'll the, never get that optimum deck. Yeah, there's a nice mixture there going on of deck building, mm-hmm. like Dominion style, getting more cards, adding to them, and changing your deck density. Yeah. And then the card drafting, trying yeah. to bring the cards in to then add yeah. to that. The irony being that you can bring in the governor card, for example, to remove cards. And then it adds more and then by adding a card. And yeah. the governor itself is made of bloat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the number of times you draw it and you go, oh, I can't do anything with so this right now. I'll... The game starts nicely, and the way I, just the way I remembered it, it was nice and fun, very quick back and forth, taking, uh, yeah. taking one place and losing yeah. another one. You can launch a siege early raid. on and just raid early on, and everything goes, moves by quick, but it does have a thing whereby if a player doesn't get ahead early on, it can mm. sort of drag when there's like yes. two big fortifications, and you really, you can sort of look at that you can maybe go this way or this way, but it's like, you know, there's... Massive choke points. That's the point of the game. Yeah. There's choke points, and that can sort of slow down the game a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I actually forgot that getting to Kennebec... Yes. Was, getting to Kennebec did not no, grant no, you access to, to Quebec. Right. Which is right adjacent to it, which makes you so, think that uh, the British player can just storm straight through, but you can't. Mm. Which is a bit annoying if you don't really know that. But that's, of course, that's, yeah, but it, fair enough, because it is like two steps down the road from yeah, your yeah. starting. Yeah, exactly. But that was, that was the biggest gripe for this game for me, was that the mid-game, always, it slows down. And instead of fighting the other yes. player, you are fighting your own yeah. deck. Earlier you compared this to Twilight Struggle, you were saying that uh, it's not quite... It's, it's, it is different, and I actually think I prefer Twilight Struggle personally, because it uh, in Twilight Struggle, things were happening all the time. Every single turn, that it is, was that is the true. intensity of that it is, maintained that, that, that pace. I, but the board got bigger and bigger, and you actually developed, and things actually felt bigger and more... The that's, stakes that's felt like they were racing. Whereas in this one, sure, you had more area, but you just ended up seeing it as three choke points. Mm. It didn't matter how many places you had on the side, because yeah. it's only those choke points that it, really matter. I do I do compare them directly, since we have played them recently, one, yeah. one to the other, but this game is a lot simpler. Than, like, if, you want, if you're trying to pick between yes. two yes. games to play, I would say this one is definitely more accessible. I would agree. You could probably play it with more people, but it is You probably, can only play it with two people. I know what I you mean. mean. More, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your pool of two people. Your pool of yeah. two people, yeah. yeah so your pool of two people for Twilight Struggle is very tiny. <laughs> and your pool of two people for Few is now is potentially larger. So, it, I think, as a game, I would recommend A Few Acres of Snow. Oh, I, I absolutely would as well. However, that Achilles heel is that mid-game where it does slow down and you're just fighting your deck as it gets really, really fat. Yeah. And yeah. slow. And, yeah, yeah. Now, there is also some criticism out there that there are some strategies that are a little bit overpowered for the British, and I believe that was only in the first edition, and this is probably going to end up with comments on the YouTube if I made a mistake, but uh, I believe the second edition has 
it significantly reduced that. Hmm. Um, I haven't gone up to read Strategy well, Online because I don't do that. I think it's an asymmetrical game, and I think it's rather balanced in the way that the French player is generally low on money. Yes. However, they can use their trader to change furs and yeah, get some money that way. Yeah, they've done a nice asymmetry, asymmetry in this game. Hmm. Mm. Asymmetry. Asymmetry. And the uh, British have a lot of money to begin with, but mm. they have they have their settlers and boats that they need to advance, but they're most of the time on the same cards. Yes. So the timing of getting those cards and playing them is mm. very important. Yeah, and, it's, oh. it is a timing game and you'll always screw it up, and that's... I, I think it's kind of fun it's when a, things go wrong, but there is an upper limit where it just goes, the, come on, I okay. can't get anything. Okay, for theme, this game nails it, especially with the gameplay that it does snowed... You get snowed in with your <laughs> yeah. cards. It gets slow, and you really have trouble with it then. And you're just like, this war has to end. What is the next form of action? So I was I was trying to build up the left side of the board to get you know the small points in there, points, assuming yeah. the game was going to end when you were ambushing with Native Americans to you know raid and ambush my settlements. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, I'll get points there. So by the time the game ends, I'm ahead anyway, since I'm off. You know, didn't matter because those 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 are ratings and those. I was so sieges. surprised. I was so, so good su uh, at the end of the game. I was so surprised at the points disparity hmm. because Sam had uh, like an extra twenty points over me simply for having Lewisburg, uh, having developed. a couple of de places developed, a couple of places on the side, and then those sieges just add up those points. I, the, okay, uh, one more thing: sieges. The sieges were the best part of the game. Yes. Because when you in when you initiate the siege, right? They already have a benefit of plus one, yep. so it's they they have a defender, they have and they advantage. can buff that with they fortifications. Can buff that. And you can, some places have higher. But the points. cool thing about the siege is, while the siege is happening, and they can be happening on two fronts, you're throwing in your military cards to buff it to win the siege. But it's helpless because you're putting down a card and it's in the siege pile and until whoa. the battle ends. So we had a siege right at the start of the game, <laughs> and you robbed me of like half my hand, and I was cycling yeah. through the same three or four cards. Yep. And so that siege had to end. Mm, exactly, and, 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 and I wasn't going to let it end because I was still able to do other things. I was able to build up my economy while he was trying to just it, it survive. It took all of my focus away. And I think that's where the sieges of this game, they're the crux mechanic, they're the, mm. the best part of the game. Yeah. And that's and especially in the early game, it's where it shines because there are less cards to cycle through. To, Whereas to in the late game, it's, okay, we started a siege, we're both at a draw, let's draw for the next five turns until one of yeah, us gets more cards than the other. for about five or six turns, none of us were drawing military <laughs> to actually advance the siege. And then suddenly we both got massive amounts of military. It's and just, the, ah! And, and then the game ended very suddenly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The game ended so suddenly. Well, you knew it was coming because it was, I had... 10 yeah, points but, worth but of it was a case of where oh, I ambushed this location with Ned Anyway, Americans. I think we're starting to ramble at this point. So yeah, oh, it's still a fantastic game. I'd still recommend it, but I feel like it's um, replayability it a, is not the best. It has weaknesses. Oh, and a smaller side, the component quality is pretty bad. Really? Mm, it's just yeah. little bits of... It's, I mean, it's still the standard woods and wood bits of... Yeah. Um, but the card quality is terrible. I'm in Townsville, it's very humid will, and the I cards will, stick together. I will defend it by saying that, you know, we're spoiled by, like, <laughs> fantasy flight games. Well, maybe, but the problem here is that, I mean, we live in a humid area, and this may be just us, or, but we found that the cards stick together. Fair and if the cards are sticking together, then it's hard to shuffle. And if it's hard to shuffle, then it's hard it's, to make it's a deck building, building game. It's shuffle. That's very true. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna be. I think that this game, it could, if it gets picked, if it was picked up by a large publisher, given a bit more shine Maybe. and polish, that I think it could happen. be really special. Yeah. But it's unfortunately got its weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We hope you've enjoyed our Same. wrong voice. We hope you've enjoyed our review of a few acres of snow. Sacre bleu, fromage, camembert. We'll see you next time here on the Board Game Nights. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Boop. Boop.